In this English grammar video, we are looking at modals of obligation, must and have to. But are they the same or are they different? Both must and have to mean there's no choice. There's no choice. There's no choice. But they are different. So let's talk about how they are different in this video. Let's get right to it. Let's look at an example sentence. Must. I must get a new job. I can't do this anymore or have to. I have to, you see how the pronunciation changes in the sentence, have to. I have to get a new job. I can't do this anymore. So the meaning is there is no choice. I must change jobs. I will certainly take action to change jobs. But do you think, is there a difference in meaning between these two sentences? Let's look at them again. I must get a new job. I can't do this anymore. I have to get a new job. I can't do this anymore. So do you think there's a difference in meaning? Yes, there is a little difference. Let's look at what that looks like. So they are both obligations, but they're different. So let's look at how they're different. Must. This obligation comes from your feelings. You feel it is important and that you need to do it, but it is more personal. It's your personal feelings. Have to. This obligation means you have no choice because it comes from the situation beyond your control, not your personal feelings. So must is personal feelings and have to is it comes from the situation. So let's look at these examples again. Must. I must get a new job. I can't do this anymore. The meaning here is it's important to me to get another job because I feel I cannot keep working here. I don't like it at all my feelings. I, I have to get it. I must, sorry, get a new job because I don't want to do this anymore. So it's about feelings. But let's look at have to, the example with have to. I have to get a new job. I can't do this anymore. This one is slightly different. The meaning here is that there is no choice. It is based on the situation beyond my control, not my feelings, but the situation. For example, maybe it's because of stress. I have to get a new job or it could be I have allergies to the chemicals I use when I clean, um, etc. So I have to, it's beyond my control and it's based on the situation. Okay, let's look at another example, must. We must sell our car before we buy another one. Have to, we have to sell our car before we buy another one. They have a slightly different meaning between the two. So let's look more closely at those two examples, must. We must sell our car before we buy another one. The meaning here is personal. Remember, must is personal. So it's important to us to sell our first car so that we have all the money we need to buy the new one. But, you know, we could buy the new one first if we wanted to, but it is personally important to us not to do that. We want to sell our car first, maybe because we are money conscious. So that's our feeling, our personal choice. But with have to, it's, it's not our personal choice. It's based on the situation. We have to sell our car before we buy another one. Maybe there's no choice. I mean, in the sense that it's based on the situation. Maybe we have to have the money from the first car to pay for the second one. So if we don't sell our first car, we won't have enough money to buy the new one. I do want to point out that have to and must both indicate no choice, but one is based on personal and no choice and the other is based on situation, no choice. So have to feels a little stronger. So a few notes for you about have to and must. It's more common to use have to in spoken English. Very, very common. Written English is more formal, so must is good there, and spoken English is more informal, so have to is more common. So you will rarely hear must in spoken English because it's too formal. And you will always hear a native English speaker use have to in conversations. But don't be confused because in formal situations, you can speak must. You can use it in spoken English. And that would be situations around laws and rules. Like, for example, you must be on time for the meeting, your boss says. That's spoken English and it's a rule. He's, he's allowed to say that it's formal. Also, you can use must if your boss says something like, you must finish the report by the end of the day. 
And that means you have no choice, right? <laughs> it's his personal feeling that you must finish that report. You must have a driver's license to drive a car, the police would say to you. And you must show your passport before boarding the airplane, uh, the stewardess at the front might say to you at the airport. But these are all rules and formal situations, so it's easy for you to remember that must is formal. But if you do hear must in a conversation, remember it might have a different meaning. So we rarely use it in conversations about obligations. But that's, remember, that's the reason modals are difficult. It's because they have different uses. So you might hear people using must in a conversation, but it rarely has anything to do with talking about obligations. Hear the guy saying, oh, there must be a parking spot somewhere. So when in doubt, use have to, because that's what native English speakers do. So I have to go. Bye. Thank you for watching a video by Melissa Carroll, my English teacher.